Welcome to the Cambridge Learning Center, and thanks for joining us for this segment of our video newsletter. I'm Leonardo Radamile. In this segment of our newsletter, we're going to be talking about one of the most important aspects of mastering the MCAT verbal, and that is the ability to pick out key ideas. Now, why is this crucial? Well, we know from cognitive science that the ability to pick out key ideas and see the relationship between them is really the key to mastering any essay or argument. Why do I call it an argument? Well, any essay is, in essence, an argument. The author is trying to prove a point. He's trying to convince you of one particular issue. And any argument or essay is governed by the rules of rhetoric. What is rhetoric? Rhetoric is the ability to not only construct essays, but understand how they're constructed, to understand how they're made. It's this ability, knowing the structure of an essay, that allows you to quickly and efficiently pick out the key ideas within that essay. For example, in all of the essays that you'll be reading, they have a predictable structure. Let's call it a gross morphology. And the overall structure normally consists of a thesis paragraph, which contains the key ideas of the argument, followed by example paragraphs, which provide factual examples or discuss or advance the logic of the arguments, and a conclusion paragraph, which will tell you the significance or relevance of the entire essay. Now, in addition to the overall structure or the gross morphology of the essay, rhetoric shows us that the individual paragraphs themselves also have a structure. And that structure is normally made up of three parts. The first part is the topic sentence, which is normally the first sentence of the paragraph. It's in the topic sentence that you'll see the key idea that's going to be developed throughout the paragraph. There'll also be a conclusion sentence that'll be telling you why it's important. And in between the topic sentence and the conclusion sentence, particularly if it's a long paragraph, you'll find other sentences that also contain key ideas. How do we pick these out? Well, all of these sentences have what we call rhetorical cues. Rhetorical cues are words or types of punctuation that an author uses to signal to you that this is an important idea. For example, one of the most important rhetorical cues is semicolons and colons. Why are semicolons and colons important? Well, in sentences that have semicolons and colons, an author is usually telling you the same thing twice in two different ways. After the semicolon or colon, you'll usually have either an explanatory statement or an example of the idea that the author is talking about in the first part of the sentence. Now, semicolons and colons warn you that the author is saying, hey, listen, pay attention to this. This is a key idea. I'm not only going to tell you twice, but I'm going to tell you two different ways and perhaps even give you an example so you realize that this is really important. The second rhetorical cue is contrast words. Authors will use words like but, however, nevertheless, yet. And when an author uses a contrast word, what he's telling you is, this is very important. And why are contrast words important? Well, after a contrast word, the author is giving you a very important idea. What comes before the contrast word is only something to highlight it. So the author is pointing out, pay attention to this. The third type of rhetorical cue to be aware of is quotation marks. Now, when you have quotation marks, what an author is telling you is either pay attention to this word because it's really important, or he's doing something a little bit more subtle. He's using quotation marks to show irony. And what he's really saying is the opposite of what the quoted word says. So once you understand the gross morphology, the overall structure of what an essay is, it'll be so much easier for you to understand a text. Think of it this way. An essay is very much like a Christmas tree. Going up the middle of the Christmas tree is the trunk. That's the argument. Then you have the key ideas supporting and feeding into that. And then you have the facts that really hang on it like ornaments. So if you can understand the gross morphology of an essay, if you can understand the structure of an individual paragraph, and if you can understand how facts relate to it, you're really going a long way to mastering a text. Now, what we'd like to do is take a look at a paragraph from the Exam Crackers 101 Essays to show you how these things work in real life. So what I'd like you to do now is stop the text 
and read this paragraph really carefully. Try to get as much out of it as you can. Now that you've read that paragraph, let's go through it together. Now, let's first look at the topic sentence. The topic sentence will tell you what the paragraph is about. Now, this is particularly important in a thesis paragraph, because remember, the thesis paragraph is the key paragraph of the entire essay. That's where you're going to find the author's argument, the key idea. Okay, now let's take a look at this topic sentence together. Arguments abound over whether or not marijuana should be legalized. What the author is telling us is that this essay is going to be about the legalization of marijuana. And let's take a look at the conclusion paragraph. But notice this. It's not only a conclusion sentence which tells us that it contains a key idea, but it also starts with a contrast word, but. Now, the author is telling us here, not only is this my conclusion, not only is this in important, but I'm really going to emphasize it with another rhetorical cue. So he's making this point in a very strong way. And what's the point that he's making? Take a look at the language. What he's telling us is that people who are in favor of legalization are ignoring the damage that marijuana does. Now, the key ideas in the thesis paragraph are critically important for two reasons. First, they're telling you what the argument is, and here we see the argument. But in addition to that, they allow you to anticipate and understand the structure of the entire essay. The author has told us that there's a lot of arguments for legalization, but what he's also told us is that these arguments ignore the damage of marijuana. Now let's take a look at that conclusion sentence and look at it very carefully. What we've got in that conclusion sentence is two things that the people who are in favor of legalization ignore. The first is long-term damage to the user, and the second is the damage to society as a whole. Now, reading this and understanding it, what you can see is that the rest of the essay is going to be organized around proving that there is long-term damage to society and also long-term damage to individuals. So you immediately know what the gross morphology is. You know that there's going to be a section on damage to society and a section on damage to individuals. Now, what's the advantage of this? Well, again, we know from cognitive science that if you can see the structure of an essay, if you can see the structure of how the ideas are laid out, that gives you a framework for understanding. So that while other people are going through these essays really struggling line by line and paragraph by paragraph, trying to figure out what's going on, you have a complete understanding of what the argument is, and you can anticipate and understand the points that are made following it. In effect, you can now see the Christmas tree. You can see the trunk of the tree, which is the argument or the main idea. And you can also see how the two key ideas feed into it. Now let's take a look at the second paragraph in this essay. And what I'd like you to do again is stop the video here and read it very carefully. See how much you can get out of it. Go ahead, stop the video. Now let's take a look at this paragraph together. First, let's go to the topic sentence. In the Netherlands, marijuana has been legally available since 1976. So that's really important. The author is really telling us that we've got a lot of history with this. Now let's take a look at the conclusion sentence. What's the significance of the information in this paragraph? It would seem then that legalization promotes experimentation with cannabis, if not even harder drugs. Now let's take a look at that carefully. There are two ideas there. The first that legalization increases usage, and second, that it may be a gateway to other drugs. So when we take a look at the topic sentence and the conclusion sentence, what the author is telling us is that legalization produces more usage of marijuana, and in addition to that, it may lead to the usage of other harder drugs.
Now, this is a pretty long paragraph, so the question then becomes, how do we look at the information that's in between and pick out the key ideas? Well, again, it's through the use of rhetorical cues. Now, the first rhetorical cue that we see is quotation marks around coffee shops. And what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that it's important, but notice that it's used ironically. These coffee shops are not really coffee shops. They're really more marijuana dispensaries. So the author is telling us that these things are the opposite of what they seem. But notice this as well. Whenever you have irony, there's always more than a hint of criticism. So that the author is signaling to us again that these coffee shops are not only what they seem, but he doesn't approve of them. So that's the second key idea. Now let's see if there are any other rhetorical cues. Well, in the following sentence, we have a contrast word, however. So we know that there's a key idea here. And again, the key idea is since legalization, more people have tried or are using marijuana. And then again, we have the conclusion sentence. So in this paragraph, we really have four key ideas. Now, it's not that you're ignoring the information in between, but that statistical study in between is just fill in information. It's good to be aware of it, but realize that 80% of the questions are idea questions. And if you understand the key ideas and see their relationships to each other, not only are you going to get those questions right, but the facts will tend to stick to those key ideas. And when you don't recall them, you'll be able to very quickly go back to the text and see where they are. So again, let's see where we are. In the first paragraph, or thesis paragraph, we've seen that there are two key points. There are a lot of arguments about legalization of marijuana. So in the thesis paragraph, we've seen that there are two key points. First, that there are lots of arguments about legalization of marijuana. And second, that they ignore the damage to the user and society. And in the second paragraph, we see that the two key ideas are greater use since legalization, and the author disapproves of that, and also that legalization promotes greater use and the use of worse drugs. Now, another thing to notice is the relationship between the two paragraphs. Notice that in the thesis paragraph, in the conclusion sentence, the author talks about the damage to the user and society. And then notice in the second paragraph, particularly with the citing of those statistics and studies, what the author is talking about is the damage to society in that paragraph. So what you can see is how this second paragraph relates to the conclusion sentence in the first paragraph. The author is going down the first main idea, which he laid out in the thesis paragraph. In the subsequent paragraph, you can anticipate that he's going to be talking about the damage to the individual. So now you can see how the principles of rhetoric allow you to analyze the overall structure of an essay, the structure of particular paragraphs, pick out the key ideas, and see how they're related to each other. And this is one of the keys to mastering and excelling in the MCAT verbal. And what do we mean by excelling? We mean getting a score of 10 or better. You see, there's no mystery to mastering the MCAT verbal. It's all about fundamentals. And what we're talking about today may seem new to you, but if you can master chemistry and physics, you can certainly master this. Just as in the sciences, verbal reasoning has its fundamentals. And once you master those, you'll be able to go through essays with a great deal of facility. Like we tell our students at the Cambridge Learning Center, this is not brain surgery. It's not really complicated but it is brain science. You have to understand the underlying mechanisms of how language works. So thanks for stopping by at the Cambridge Learning Center. In our next segment, we're going to be discussing grammar, and that's going to be a really interesting one. You see, once you've been able to pick out the key ideas, grammar allows you to really analyze that sentence and clearly understand its meaning. Now this is particularly important where you have some sentences that can go on for six or seven lines and have 50 or 60 words. Grammar allows you to take what seems like a wall of words and really reduce it to three or four words that give you a very, very clear concept of what that sentence says. So thanks again for joining us for this segment of our video newsletter and thanks for stopping by at the Cambridge Learning Center. 
you're always welcome. Tell your friends. And for the Cambridge Learning Center, I'm Leonardo Radamile.